Hello everyone, welcome to Johnny Dell's Football Academy, the channel that's trying to answer the whys and hows of the game. In this episode, we're going to be diving into the defense and breaking down a number of the key plays and players in this past week's matchup. Green Bay came into the game with the ninth highest scoring offense and a much improved defense. The 49ers, while an impressive 9-1, were still facing questions about their legitimacy as a top team. However, it didn't take long for the 49ers to show why they are one of the best teams in the NFC and why they must be included in the conversation for Super Bowl contention. From the first series of the game, San Francisco's defense was on full display. If you read the article I wrote for 49erswebzone.com last week, I did a scouting report on the Packers before the game. Make sure to follow me on Twitter as I'll post links to any articles I write as well as links to videos on my channel. What makes the 49ers defense special is that they are a complete defense from top to bottom. They have multiple playmakers at every level. In the offseason, John Lynch talked about the need for difference makers. And this game had plenty of difference makers. From the D-line to the linebackers to the secondary, there are multiple players to highlight. So stay tuned this week as I'm going to put out some videos highlighting different players' performances from this past game. But with all that being said, let's just start diving into the film. I want to show this first play because it's one that will be very familiar to us as 49ers fans. This is the same play that we ran against the Browns on Monday Night Football, the opening play of the game where Matt Breida ran for 83 yards and a touchdown. If you haven't seen that video, I will put a link to it in the description. What it is, is a weak side counter. So it'll look like an off-tackle run to the strong side. The O-line has a tough job. They need to sell that they're trying to scoop or reach block across the line. A scoop or reach block is where a lineman is going to cross the face of the defender and seal him off. But they're not supposed to win. They're just meant to sell the reach block and then wash their man down the line of scrimmage. You have both your fullback and running back fake to the strong side. And then the fullback is going to come back across the formation and kick out the M loss or N man on the line of scrimmage. The tackle and guard are going to look to double team down on the three technique or the defensive tackle on the outside shoulder of the guard. And then the tackle is going to move to the second level and block a linebacker. The key on this play is going to be DJ Jones. He does a great job of firing out with a low pad level. This allows him to get underneath leverage of the center, who now has no control of Jones, and he's driving him backwards. As you see, Jones drives him into the backfield, and the center tries to grab and turn him away from where the play is designed to go, but it's too late. Jones has already penetrated too far into the backfield and took away the counter lane for the running back. So the running back tries to take it to the strong side. However, the line was washing everything down that direction and the tackle was sealing off Dre Greenlaw from the other side. So Buckner fills the running lane along with Dre Greenlaw. DJ Jones played a phenomenal game and look for an episode later this week highlighting more of his play as he turned out to be a key difference maker in this game. But on this play, we're able to hold Green Bay to a zero yard gain. So then, backed up on third down, the 49ers are going to force a turnover in the game and set the offense up near the goal line. From the coverage, we're going to come with a blitz here and play man coverage on the back end. Jaquaski Tart has a tough job on this play as he's going to line up at the line of scrimmage and then bail out as a deep middle safety. This is one of those calls that when it works, the coordinator looks like a genius, and when it doesn't, he looks terrible. We're going to bring Kwan Williams on a blitz off the slot and drop Greenlaw into coverage. The idea is that they're trying to take away anything quick. As Rodgers drops back, I really like how Greenlaw and Ward pass off their guys in coverage. But this play is all about how we got pressure. By bringing Tart and Greenlaw up, we're trying to draw a line slide to the strong side and then overload the weak side. And we're going to run a tackle end stunt with Bosa and Buckner. 
Fred Warner crosses the face of the center on his rush, drawing him away from the blitz, and both Armstead and Thomas crash down trying to open up K1 Williams on his blitz. On the other side, Bosa crashes down, pulling Bakhtiari, the left tackle, with him inside, opening up Buckner on his stunt. Armstead is going to put the right guard on skates and start driving him into the backfield. Buckner beats the other guard with a nasty swim move, and as Rodgers is drifting back, he'll feel the pressure from Buckner off the edge. But with the penetration from Armstead, he has nowhere to go. Warner keeps fighting the whole play and is able to get in and force a fumble, which Bosa is able to recover. You see how Green Bay was able to pick up most of what we did to manufacture a rush, but they simply got outmatched along the line. Not only that, you have two guys in Fred Warner and Nick Bosa who don't win on their initial pass rushes and really aren't even doing anything to rush the passer. They're setting up other guys to rush. But they never quit on the play and are the two that take this from a regular sack to a game-changing turnover. The next play, I want to give Sala some love. Several times throughout the game, he had well-timed calls that confused Aaron Rodgers and nearly forced him into a couple really bad plays. We're known to run a lot of cover three zone, especially on early downs. So on this play, we're going to come out and show cover three zone with a single safety and Jaquaski Tart down in the box. However, right before the snap, Tart is going to back out and we're going to run cover two zone. The Packers are running an old West Coast offense staple the slant flat concept. One reason you mix up these coverages is not only that it changes where the weaknesses are, it changes the key reads for the quarterbacks. The slant flat looks to put the curl flat defender in conflict. He is the key read on the play. If he stays in, the quarterback throws the flat route. If he goes out on the flat route, the quarterback throws the slant. At the snap, Rodgers is looking to read K1 Williams, who he thinks has the flat. He sees his first steps back and not out and looks to hit the flat route, thinking the corner has deep third. However, Mosley is in cloud coverage and drives on the flat route, making a big hit, and Rodgers was lucky. Many quarterbacks have thrown pick sixes in this exact same situation. So, hats off to Sala as he was able to confuse Rodgers several times in this game and throw off what he wanted to do and was an understated contributor to the defense's strong performance. Another guy I thought played a really great game was Jimmy Ward. He was all over the field and has really shown why Kyle Shanahan and the coaching staff has believed in him so much. Look for an episode this week where I'll highlight more of his plays in this game. On this play, it's 3rd and 13, and the Packers are going to come out and run a dagger concept to the three-receiver side. The dagger is a combination of an inside streak or seam route and a dig or deep in route. They then also run a backside deep curl. With the 49ers showing cover 4, this is going to look to put the middle defender in conflict. The streak route looks to clear out the two middle safeties and then the mic will be horizontally stretched against the dig and the deep curl. The dig is the primary on this play. Another nod to Sala, the 49ers are going to rotate post-snap into cover 3 buzz, where you have a safety come down into a hook curl zone. The dagger should still work here as the dig should still sit in between the two hook curl defenders. As Rodgers drops back, he sees that the dig should break open, and he checks the backside and sees Ward sitting on the dig. With the dig taken away, Rodgers thinks he has the backside curl. But Ward reads Rodgers the whole way and makes a terrific break on the ball. From the end zone, you'll see how Rodgers is looking to the dig first, and then to the deep curl and how Ward got to the ball just in time. That's an incredible play against a quarterback who looked him off and then has one of the fastest releases and strongest arms in the game. 
Jimmy Ward has taken a lot of heat from fans over the last few years. He's really struggled staying healthy, and then when he's played, it hasn't seemed like he's played at a very high level. But in this game, he was a huge factor in the win, and again, look for another episode this week where I'm going to highlight more of his play. Another guy I want to highlight is Akella Witherspoon. This was his first game back coming off of injury, and I was so excited for what I saw. This is another guy I'm going to highlight more in some videos coming this week. Here, the Packers know he's in the game and are going to look to test him early. They were able to go after him when we played them last year, and they want to see if they can do it again. They're first going to run play action to the field side and look to move the launch point of the quarterback. This is all to buy time for Devontae Adams' route against Witherspoon. On the backside, they're just going to run a couple routes that are only meant to occupy any possible help. They are trying to isolate Adams on Witherspoon. Adams is just going to run a stutter and go route. He'll release vertically, stutter like he's running a comeback route, and then go vertical again. You see how the run action and the routes to the other side of the field draws the attention and how Witherspoon is completely isolated. If we back it up, one thing Witherspoon is much improved upon is his bump and run coverage. He never bites too hard on the inside release and then gets his hand on the inside shoulder of the receiver. This is going to allow him to stay on top or in phase with the receiver. How many times would we see Witherspoon last year in a trail position? Not here. He does a great job of squeezing Adams' route to the sideline and then doesn't bite on the stutter at all. He then doesn't allow himself to get stacked and the ball falls incomplete. I can't express enough how good of a game Witherspoon played while he was in. So with our aggressiveness on the underneath stuff, the Packers are going to try and get us to bite again. This time, they have a well-timed call against our defense. We come out with Shikwaski Tart near the line of scrimmage, but we'll back out into a cover two zone. The Packers have a good play here versus cover two. They're going to run the sluggo. If you saw my videos on the Redskins game, you're familiar with this. It's a slant and go. So it'll sell a slant flat concept, and the QB will pump on the slant, and then it turns into a go. It's also worth noting that the Packers' right tackle was out of the game here, and so we're going to run a tackle and stunt with Armstead and Bosa. After the snap, you'll see Rodgers pump on the slant, which holds Jimmy Ward just a bit, and the sluggo route is open down the sideline. Ward still plays this pretty well, but Rodgers is a quarterback that can make this throw. But Bosa did a great job of getting just enough of the right tackle, and Armstead is athletic enough that they execute their stunt to perfection, and Rodgers doesn't have the time needed to make the throw. So, even when they could defeat our coverage, our front didn't allow them to take advantage. The last play I want to show in this episode is another one highlighting how we mixed up coverages and kept Rodgers off his game. Here, we're going to show cover three with a single high safety and Jaquaski Tart up at the line of scrimmage. The Packers have an RPO called on this play, which is a run pass option. It's an inside zone with their receiver running a quick out. With an extra defender in the box pre-snap, I think Rodgers made the decision he was going to pull this ball before the snap. Right as the ball is snapped though, Tart backs out and we're going to run cover two zone with Sherman in cloud coverage, or a corner in the flat. After Rodgers pulls the ball, he looks to throw right away. But when he looks up, he sees Sherman squatting in the flat and pulls the ball down. It's a good thing he did, or Sherman might have had a pick six. He then looks to see if he can run it. With no other options, that's taken away by the front, and he just has to throw it away. You can see Sherman's disappointment. They were really close to baiting Rodgers into a pick six. But you see how Sala in this defense was yet again able to confuse Rodgers, which is no easy task. Rodgers is headed to the Hall of Fame and has been playing at an extremely high level his entire career. These are also plays that he's been running for a long time, so it's not like he's just missing this stuff because it's a new offense. This is just good defense. Well, that's it for this episode, guys. Look for more episodes coming out this week. I'm going to put together a video highlighting guys in the secondary, Akella Witherspoon, Kaywon Williams, and Jimmy Ward. 
and then I'll do another video to look at some of the guys along the front, DJ Jones, Armstead, Fred Warner, and Nick Bosa. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for tuning in. If you'd like to support the channel, I'll have some ways you can do that in the description. You can also follow me on Twitter at Johnny Dells. That's Johnny Dells with no H. And you can subscribe and set your notifications to see when more videos will be coming out. This was a great win and a lot of fun to watch on film. But until next time, go Niners!